So I want to find the Maclaurin series for sine of x. So recall, Maclaurin series means our center is going to be at x equals 0. We're going to use the Taylor coefficient formula, a sub k equals the kth derivative of f, evaluate at 0, and then divide by k factorial. We take all those coefficients, and then we load them up into a power series like this. So let's calculate. f of 0 is going to be 0. Sine of 0 is 0. Then I take the derivative of that. I get cosine. Let's just go through the derivatives. Derivative of cosine is minus sine. Derivative of sine is cosine, so I get minus cosine. Take derivative of cosine, that gives me minus sine. So you'll notice, after four derivatives, I wind up back where I started with sine. So our coefficients here are going to cycle, meaning we put in our 0 and see what comes out. So we're going to have 1 for cosine, sine gives me 0, minus cosine gives me a minus 1, and then sine is going to give me a 0. So just the way the derivatives are going to work, we're going to have 1, 0, minus 1, 0, and then it's just going to keep repeating. 1, 0, minus 1, 0, 1, 0, minus 1, 0. To get our AKs, all I need to do now is just divide by K factorial. So going through our first few A's, we'll have A0 is 0, A1 is 1, A2 is 0, a3, we get the minus 1, but now I have to divide by 3 factorial. A4 is 0. For A5, I just go back to the 1, and then I divide by 5 factorial, and so on. So, first few terms of our Maclaurin series are going to be x minus x cubed over 3 factorial, plus x to the 5th over 5 factorial, minus x to the 7th over 7 factorial. So what do you notice? This is just going to be the odd powers of x, divided by the factorial that goes with them, and then we just alternate the signs. In closed form, we're going to have sine x equals sum going from 0 to infinity, minus 1 to the n, x to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1 factorial. So this one, not obvious at a first glance, but if you just play around with the first few coefficients, you'll see that this fits. Now, I can use the ratio test with our general term here, and then we'll see that the domain for our Maclaurin series is going to be all real numbers. Okay, now that I have that, we can get the Maclaurin series for cosine of x just by taking the derivative of the one for sine of x. So when I do that, what are we going to do? We're going to take, for the general term, we're going to take the 2n plus 1 on the x, bring that down, then we're going to take 1 off that. So the power of x's we'll be looking at are going to be x to the 2n. What we're going to be dividing by, note, if I bring that 2n plus 1 down, in the bottom we have 2n plus 1 factorial, which is going to be all the numbers multiplied together, 1 through 2n plus 1. So if I put a 2n plus 1 on top, the 2n plus 1's are going to cancel, and then all I'll be left with is 1 multiplied all the way up through 2n. So. That's going to give me this series here. And then if I write out the first few terms, we know we'll get 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the 4th over 4 factorial minus x to the 6th over 6 factorial. And you'll note that th these first four terms are just going to be the derivative of these four terms here. OK, so that's Maclaurin series for sine and cosine. Now. We should see this trick at least once. This is going to be how do I divide a power series into another power series. So we have sine and cosine, so we might as well get tangent while we're here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write tangent out. We'll just write it out as power series, first few terms, and then we'll hit our technique. Now note, tangent's going to be an odd function. Okay, You can either put your minus sign in and track it through the definition, or just look it up, or look at the graph. But it's going to be true. Tangent's odd. So what odd will mean is the only terms that are going to show up in its Maclaurin series are going to be the ones that have odd powers. Okay, Cosine's even, and we notice the only terms that show up in its Maclaurin series are going to be the ones with even powers. All right, so I can shorten this up a little bit. I can throw away the a0, the a2, a4, and so on. So I'll write out a1, A3, A5, those will be the three that we'll look for. Now note, since I have tan of x equals sine x over cosine x, if I multiply both sides by cosine, 
what's going to come out is going to have to be equal to sine. So what we'll do is we'll multiply tangent by cosine, see what comes out, and then we'll just set the answer equal to sine, and then all I do is match up the powers of x. Okay, so let's see what we have. I'm going to multiply first with the cosine by the 1, so that's just going to be rewriting out our first three terms for tangent. Then I'm going to multiply by the x squared over 2. So we do that for each of these three terms. I'll only use the first two since we're only going to the fifth power. So that'll give me this. And then I'll multiply by x to the 4 over 24 to get the next one. And so that's just going to give us this one since we're only going up to the fifth power. And we note there's no way if I use this x to the sixth, that's going to get x to the seventh. So I've got all possibilities for x to the fifth or lower here. Okay, now we just do the columns. So we'll have a1x. That's the only thing I get for the x power. We're going to have a3 minus a1 over 2. So I'll write it like this because we know the coefficient of x cubed and sine is going to have a minus sign on it. So let's just, just make it easier to pull apart. And then same idea for the x to the fifth term. We know that'll have a plus sign when we look at sine. So I'll just leave it with the plus sign there, and that's going to give us this expression. So now we know that this is going to be equal to sine. So let's take a look at what happens for each coefficient in front of our powers of x. So I know the coefficient of x in sine is going to be a 1. So that's going to tell me a1 is going to be equal to 1. When I go to the x cubed, we know that the coefficient of sine before x cubed is minus 1 over 3 factorial, which is minus 1 sixth. OK, we're going to pull the sign out so we don't have to worry about it. So what I'm going to have there is 1 half minus a3 is equal to 1 sixth. And then when I push the 1 sixth to the other side, or actually it's going a3 goes over there, 1 sixth goes over here. That leaves me with a3 equal to 1 third. Then for the last one, we're going to have a5 minus a3 over 2 plus a1 over 24 equals 1 over 120. So we know that a3 is 1 third, a1 is 1. And so when I crunch this down, I'm going to get a fifth equals 2 over 15. So the first three terms for the Maclaurin series of tan x are going to look like x plus x cubed over 3 plus 2 fifteenths x to the fifth, and so on. All right, just to throw a number into that, let's throw in pi fourths. So I'll throw pi fourths in here, so that'll be pi fourths plus pi fourths raised to the third power divided by 3 plus 2 fifteenths pi fourths raised to the fifth power. So I'll crunch that with a calculator, and that's going to give me 0.987. We know the answer is going to be a 1. Tangent of pi fourths is cosine pi fourths over under sine pi fourths, and that's going to give us a 1. They're both square root of 2 over 2. So three terms gets us in the ballpark, so we know we probably did this right.